El Centenario is the community where I live. It's just outside La Paz in the Baja Peninsula. And I wanted to talk more about this particular community because there's a lot of Americans who are retiring here or pre-tiring as I like to say, moving here before they retire, setting up businesses, working remotely to the United States, just even retiring earlier than they planned because things are so much less expensive in Mexico. So I wanted to show you this community and then I'm gonna make another video that's more specific to La Paz and different places that you might be able to live in La Paz. So I'm gonna tell you a lot about Centenario in this video and the little businesses and whatnot, but I also wanted to really talk a lot about the different areas that you could potentially live and that's not something where I'm an expert, so I engaged an expert. I've got Jim who is from Baja Life Real He's the one who sold me my house here and he's going to also come along and help us on this tour of Centenario saying, you know, what it might cost to live in a certain part of town or what, what kind of housing you can expect there. Centenario is on the road, the highway out of La Paz heading to the north and it's about 10 minutes to the edge of La Paz where you'll find businesses like uh, Walmart and, and Home Depot and whatnot and about 20 minutes from the downtown core of La Paz. So I think of it as a dusty little Mexican town and there are a number of businesses. Most of the businesses are right along the highway. So we have bars and restaurants, a couple of bars and restaurants, and we also have, you know, convenience stores. So the OXO convenience store, just like 7-Eleven in the US, we have three of them here. We have one speed bump, no stoplights in this town. Definitely no stoplights. Most of the roads are dirt roads once you get off the main highway. And you know, in terms of where you can live in Centenario, I kind of think of it as three different areas. So there's people who live down by the beach, like, like that's where me and my wife live. And then there's the flat area where mostly it's more nationals, more, more Mexicans living in that area. And then as you go back up into the hills further away from the water, there's a lot more expats living up there because the views are great. We have a view across the uh, the Bay of La Paz, uh, across the inner Bay of La Paz, overlooking at the city, and the city lights are wonderful. So let's start out with restaurants. So there are a couple of kind of, I almost think of them as gringo restaurants, and El Mesquite Verde is probably the best example of that. It's where a lot of expats hang out to get dinner, to have drinks, and just enjoy. There's always good 80s, maybe 90s music videos playing at the bar. There's a place called Margaritas and there's the Pelican across the street from that. So along the main road are some of the bigger bars and restaurants. KM 14.5 is another, that's the, the highway marker. So a number of these kind of nicer restaurants that are more catering to expats or people with a little more money spread out along the highway. But then there are so many different places that you could eat more like a local if you were going out to restaurants, re locals that are going out to restaurants. Um, there are sushi places. For the most part, the sushi here doesn't have a lot of fish in it. You might find things like uh, fried chicken in the sushi, but there's a number of these small restaurants. I love going to the street food carts. That's one of my favorite things to go get a burrito or a hamburger from the carts along the street that just kind of, they come out in the evening. There are a lot of really small grocery stores and also beer stores are pretty common. Now in the neighborhoods, kind of in that flat area, like I mentioned, it's not all residential. This is kind of a typical Mexican thing that people have their homes, but they also have their businesses operating there too. So you might find a business in front of someone's home. I like to use Lupita's place as a good example. She currently has her fruteria uh, where she sells fruits and vegetables. And I think it might be her daughter who has the sushi place next to it. And they're building a taco restaurant, which looks like it's going to be really good. And that should probably be opening in the next couple months. So a lot of people establishing businesses in their front yards. And I mentioned the OXO. So pretty much many things that you need, you're going to find at an OXO and kind of uh, basic things. If you need toilet paper, if you need milk, if you need uh, garrafones of water, uh, you're going to find all that good stuff at an OXO. There's also an Arambaro here, and that is a more upscale convenience store, and they even sell things like meat, like they've got a butcher on site. 
Centenario also has kind of a town square and I haven't really seen that many people there most of the time that we've been here. It's been during COVID, but uh, there's a town square with a library and a school and a park and the police station and the water office. So there's a number of things. It's kind of uh, like a small town. And there are a lot of houses down in this, the kind of the, the flat area that are a lot less expensive. It's just not that common for Americans to live down there. Actually, I've got a video up here about Tim's house, who he's selling his house and he is living in that area, kind of a nicer house for that area, but a lot less expensive, more in the $100,000 range, maybe even less if you'd like to save some money. So. Um, there are options down here, but with our real estate agent friend, we're gonna look at some of the areas that are a little bit more expensive, maybe starting out at 125,000 and going up from there. The areas that are more likely for expats to purchase. So this is Jim, he's my realtor, and his office is just outside the El Mesquite Verde restaurant. I mentioned that earlier. And Jim does a lot of home sales here. He's building homes here. And he's originally from, I think it was San Francisco, and they moved down here. And I think their, their tagline is, we did it, if we can do it, you can do it too. I just love that attitude. And I always forget to ask you all to subscribe. So be sure to click the subscribe button and the little bell icon to get notified of future videos if you're thinking about retiring or pre-tiring in Mexico. So my house is on the beach, so I think that's the best place to live. And that's where I asked Jim to start. This is a really mixture of some eclectic homes along the water, some nicer than others, some empty lots that are ripe for a brand new house of your own. And there are a couple of condo towers as well for people who want a little bit lower maintenance, but still want a view of the water right out in front of their home. We're talking about a few dozen maybe versus 500 plus homes up on the hill with an ocean view from a little bit further away. Prices really vary. Uh, a lot is probably about 100,000 just because beachfront, is, there aren't very many lots to be had. Uh, houses can be anywhere from 150,000 for a real fixer upper all the way to 300,000 for something that's been recently renovated. A little bit further over to my right is a little beach town called El Comitan. And there's only about seven streets. It's all sand roads, um, probably close to a couple hundred homes there. And it's a real eclectic community. Again, kind of bohemian, live and let live, not many rules. Um, it's a flat area. So the only view of the water you're gonna have is if you build up, okay? The second floor or a rooftop deck is really where you're gonna get the view of the water. However, you're only a block to the ocean, and so you can take nice strolls in the morning or the afternoon right along the waterside. So I personally feel like Comitan is a little bit out of the way. There's not a lot of uh, amenities out there uh, in terms of restaurants and bars and things like that. But the one thing they do have is the best beach in this side of town. Homes there go from probably a little under 200,000 to maybe 300,000 plus, and lots are probably about 60,000 US. All throughout this area, what you're gonna see is somewhere around 30% Canadians, about another 30% Americans, and the rest is gonna be locals. So it's a real good, unique mix of locals and expats. We have a lot of little restaurants and local shops and artisans and services right here in El Centenario. So it's only a five minute drive from Comitan to get to a local restaurant, another 10 minutes to get to the end of the edge of town. Okay, this is a new development called Real Centenario. And this is a, a development of just under 30 homes. And this is what we call a row homes. So there's gonna be a street going down the middle and there'll be a dozen or more houses on each side. They'll be two story just because the lots are smaller, uh, but they will have a rooftop deck with a view of the ocean. And they'll have a community pool. So you're gonna have some amenities and it'll have a guarded entrance. So you have some level of security for those seasonal visitors. Houses here are gonna range from about 130,000 to about 170,000. Although you do need to pay for appliances and AC units, window coverings, et cetera, on top of that price. So I am always nervous about the idea of pre-construction. I see some places around here that look like they built the front wall, but never got any further and probably were selling off lots. So I wanted to see from Jim, like, what do you have to think about if you're buying a lot of pre-construction into a project because 
it just seems like there's there's a potential for things to maybe go wrong. Pre-construction, generally speaking, you're getting a discount off of the full home price because it's just barely started. And so there's a little bit of risk. And so you get some reward. Generally speaking, you're putting about a 35% deposit prior to construction. As they make progress, you make further payments. You're making payments directly to the developer. So it's really important that you find a good real estate agent who doesn't represent the seller and who's got your best interest and do some research to make sure the developer is a good person who's got some history of delivering properties. Uh, and you know, generally speaking, this Real Centenario is based on a developer that works with a really well-known realtor here. And so there's a lot of trust and this is a property that we would bring clients to because we know the reputation of the builder and the broker and they're not gonna upset their reputation by getting into a development with somebody who's not going to complete the whole development. Okay, so here's an example of a similar gated community of row homes that they've constructed the front gate and this is about a year old but we've seen no progress since then we know that they're selling lots or taking reservations on lots but we also know that they have no power and no water rights and so until they have access to the utilities we're probably not going to see a lot of movement on here so this would be a good example of an investment that you might want to wait a little bit longer until they start rounding out the infrastructure before you invest in. Okay, so this is Haciendas Palo Verde. This is the, the top gated community within El Centenario. There's a little over 100 lots and uh, it's about 50% built out. Um, the amenities include all underground utilities, so no power lines, uh, paved internal roads, it has 24 seven guarded access at the front gate. And there's a community clubhouse with a pool and a gym. Um, and most, if not all the homes have great ocean views from the patio and most of the main floor. They're all one story homes. Houses here start at about 225,000 and they go up to 400,000 plus for you know, larger custom homes. Most of them are gonna be two bedroom, two bath. Uh, there are some that are three and four bedroom, but largely occupied about two thirds to three quarters of this neighborhood is gonna be expats from either US or Canada. There are monthly HOA fees. They're about $75 a month paid once a year. So here's another small community. It's only 12 homes, but it does have a, a fenced perimeter, single entrance. We're gonna pave the road once it's all done. These are all sold, but this is a great example of a little small community where you can get in to a two bedroom, two bath, single story house for under 150,000 US, which is a really popular data point. Because it's not gated, there are no HOA fees, so that's also a cost savings. And because the neighbors are all close together, you know, you don't have as much of a security concern in terms of having a house out by itself. If you're not here all year round, your neighbors are right next door. They can watch your house when you're not here and vice versa. What we have here is another local build where they took a full-size lot, cut it in two, and they're gonna build two homes on there. They'll be single story, but they will have a rooftop deck with a view of the ocean. And at priced at just over 100,000, they hit that really nice price point that a lot of expats are looking for when they're trying to retire early and maybe still work uh, and be able to afford a second home here. Okay, so this area is Loma del Centenario. There's a lot of expats here. It's probably two thirds expats mixed between Canada and the US. But because it's not a gated community, there are no HOA fees. And it's easy to get a house here for somewhere around 200,000 for a two bedroom home with a view and maybe even a pool. And so it's quite affordable and you can live the same kind of life without having to be in a gated community with annual dues that you need to pay.
As I was shooting that last video, I heard, Brighton, is that you? Uh, so it turns out this was Rob's house. And so he's coming out and just doing a quick chat. I like this area up here because of that, because there are a lot of gringos. A lot of people walk their dogs and really get to know each other. I've got a video up here about Jack and uh, Tanya's house. So you can check that out. If it's not there yet, it'll be there soon. But this is a really cool area. I just love how colorful and just interesting the houses are up here in in lomas so if you're if you're moving down to centenario definitely check out lomas big lots interesting houses colorful and really a sense of community these guys all get together every friday night head over to happy hour at there's a there's a restaurant up here so definitely something uh definitely a community that i like down here in centenario so here's a new neighborhood and we're starting to see some like this pop up. The intent is to mirror the same kind of approach as Haciendas Palo Verde, uh, a, a fully fenced and guarded neighborhood with paved internal roads, all underground infrastructure. Uh, this one in particular is going to have about 45 lots. They're all about a third of an acre. And as you can see, the view behind me all have wonderful ocean views. Uh, the houses will start from about 200,000. They'll go up to about 350 or 400,000. There will be uh, neighborhood association dues, probably less than $70 a month. We want to keep it pretty economical. Um, and we're planning on breaking ground towards the end of this year. We plan on seeing more like this occasionally, but this property has such nice views that this is the first one that is going to be developed. I know we covered a lot of new houses or lots on this video, but there are a lot of additional houses out there. They're just individual houses like this one here. This was recently renovated and it is for sale right now. So there are places out there. What you should do is just fly down to La Paz, get an Airbnb. You could get an Airbnb here in Centenario for just 30 to a hundred dollars a night. You get the whole house for that. And I will be making another video that is more general to La Paz and some of the neighborhoods more into the city. You'll find that video up here if it's available. If it's not yet there, you'll find one of my other great videos.